Hi everyone, my name is Brian and I'm the 3D Print Creator. And in this video I'm going to explain you guys why I'm not sharing my FFF settings or fabrication setting or, or processes of my slicers anymore. And well, it's nothing to do with uh, me don't liking to share my settings and not willing to, to show you guys how I do things, because I'm more than willing to do so. It's all about that it's not compatible with your printer. But I'm going to explain this. So as you guys know, I do have a fair amount of printers and some of them are standing behind me here. Some of them are in the garage. Some of them are just outside of the image on the other side of the room. And well, as you might have seen, I'm uh, not very keen on sharing my FFF settings for my slicer. And the reason, well, let me explain this to you. Uh, some of those printers that you see be, uh, behind me here are printers that are sent to me by uh, GearBest or by other parties uh, to show to you on my channel. And uh, those printers are first fabrication printers. This means that uh, when I got them, uh, when I received them, uh, they were yeah, very early on the batch of making and after that I received them uh, and a lot of other YouTubers also received them uh, then they were changed a little bit and uh, the printers got better and better and better and sometimes you even see this as uh, well when you're looking on the side, side of gear best for example then you see this is the upgraded version well <coughs> I am not having the upgraded version. I am having the very first version of a lot of printers. So when I would show you my fabrication settings for my slicer, then this would be the settings that are, yeah, the, that are right for me. But let me explain you what's, uh, what's happening inside your printer. Now let me take you in this example of this very simple part here which is only a two layers height stripe. So it's tw uh, two millimeters in width, it's ten millimeters in length and it's got only two layers in height. Now if I'm going to slice this, so uh, if I'm going to prepare this for the print and I'll say that I want to save this, uh, then let's save this for example here to the stripe G code. I put it in here. Now when we are taking a look at this g-code file you will see a lot of funny things. So here you can see the g-code created by Simplify 3D and well if you take a look at this code that I have over here then you see that there is a lot of uh, settings being done by Simplify 3D. Uh, which are written to the software that is in my printer and this printer is running Marlin software. And then here there is where, uh, where all the magic starts happening. Here we got the commands that uh, move the platform and well here, is, here are the processes that are being created. But there is one thing that is not created. So for example here you see a movement. You see that uh, the, the nozzle has to go from this location to another location and every time what happens is it moves from a location to a location. And here you can see that the tool head is going to a certain position. And then on that position, every time uh, the corners are being given as the, the place where the tool head has to go to. So uh, I don't know if you have seen this, but for example here, uh, I have to take it back. Here you can see that it's driving from corner to corner immediately and you will see this happening again when it's done here. Then immediately you see it taking big steps from corner to corner. So what happens after your slicer gave those comments is more uh, a thing that is controlled in your printer. So your slicer tells your printer go from this point to that point and then your interpreter in that printer the interpreter that interprets your G code that is given by the slicer yeah there uh, it's determined how to do this 
then what happens is it says well if you have to go from this point to this point uh, it's 10 centimeters far from each other then uh, in the first centimeter we have to do the acceleration and then we can do nine or eight centimeters on top speed but then after that eight centimeters in top speed where we have only one centimeter to to go uh, there we have to decelerate again because well otherwise we would bump into an end and uh, this also means that your extruder for example uh, has to while there is an acceleration going on also the extruder has to accelerate in the speed it's going to provide filament to the nozzle and when almost at the end of that line uh, it has to decelerate again because then well there has to be less filament going to, to, to ooze out of that nozzle again so there is a lot more to configure than only your slicer and this is the main reason why I'm not sharing my uh, FFF files or processes to, to anyone anymore because I like to tune my printers and uh, if I'm tuning my printer then I'm setting the acceleration speed, I'm setting the deceleration speed, I'm setting all that kind of settings in my Marlin software and then after I've done that I'm going to change things in my slicer I'm going to optimize how my slicer is giving these commands to the interpreter in that, that board which is running my Marlin software and uh, then I can optimize my slicer to that interpreter now the thing is that when you buy a printer especially when you buy a printer from a good company like for example JG Aurora then you will find out that not every printer is the same so when I got this printer which was an early batch uh, then well there were some settings which were not really perfect and then some people complained and this company said well okay we make a new batch and it's a new version and they changed some things inside the printer not only hardware wise but also in the software and uh, well they made the software better they even uh, improved a version so uh, this this printer I'm having here for example uh, when it does its seabed leveling then it's it's very rough it's all bang bang and, and it's, it's it's not really really good in leveling the bed and while <laughs> the newer versions they are very smooth so when the, the the nozzle comes down it touches the bed it goes up again then slowly comes down again and well it, it's much better and this is something they improved along the way so the printer I am having is not the same printer that my neighbor is having who bought it uh, almost a year after I got my printer so when I would give him my uh, fabrication settings for my slicer then his printer wouldn't uh, interpret it the same way as my settings and therefore it's no it's no use of, of sharing those uh, fabrication settings so you can share your settings of course you can uh, but only if you know for sure that people are using the same printer the same setup of the printer and the same software and the same settings in Marlin now because uh, here on YouTube I'm almost sure that a lot of people have different setups than I run this is the reason why I'm not sharing those files now am, am I willing to share my settings with you yes of course there where the settings count on on uh, things that yeah, that we have to use all together then of course I'm willing to share my settings so when I uh, slice something and I do this on screen then I'll show you which choices I make in my slicer and I'll also tell you why I make these choices in my slicer so you can replicate that and uh, I hope that then you will have the best print that you can have but some other settings well they're really pretty much determined by the, the software which is in your printer so I can share those settings but they won't benefit to you so this is the reason and I hope you understand now why sharing those settings well it's not, not always a good thing um, if you like this video then please give it a thumbs up also uh, please share uh, this video if you like and uh, well uh, 
yeah, subscribe to my channel, of course, and, and hit that bell button, because then you will be notified every time I make a new video. And, uh, well, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, there will be a lot of uh, questions answered, uh, because I've got a whole series of questions now that will be answered uh, in the next upcoming videos. So, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.